it, guys. It's been how much? How what's the, when? When is the last time I've done a podcast? I just checked recently, and I think the last time was um, yeah. The date was I got it right in front of me here. I think it says. Give me a second here. May May twenty seventh, twenty fifteen. Holy shit! It's been almost two years since I recorded the last episode of Me Time Gamer Podcast. Holy shit, guys! How's it going? How's it going, timekeepers? Hopefully you guys are going super well. Me, it's going fantastic as always. I don't know why. I just felt today, today was a day I felt like doing and, and start recording another podcast for you guys. It's been too long. Hopefully you guys are going well. How are you doing today, guys? Hopefully you guys are having a good day. I'm having a fantastic day. Um, I just wanted to see, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to do the little podcast all over again. See, uh, just get back into it. Cause I didn't know what to record today. I was like, Hey, you know what? You know what? You know what, guys? People, I think people would appreciate a new podcast. So the podcast, uh, I, th- I think I said a couple weeks ago, uh, a couple months ago, actually, in the beginning of January, when I was doing uh, uh, last week's gaming news, which I, I swear to God, uh, one day I will do again. It's just I, it's really time consuming, and uh, so I, I was like, oh, let, let me do a podcast, and we'll talk a bit about the news, more, uh, more, um, not, not, not too rapid like it is in, in those shows when I used to make them. A little bit more, uh, less scripted and more off the cuff type thing. See if I could uh, get my opinion out there properly and uh, well uh, versed, if that's the right thing I get to say. Anyway, episode, uh, what episode is it? Unlucky episode thirteen. So yeah, we'll start off with that. Hopefully you guys are going well. Like I already asked you. Uh, so yeah, we'll get right into it, right into it. So we'll start off what I've been playing. So if you're on the channel, the YouTube channel, uh, so youtube.com forward slash me time gamer, definitely go check that out. I've been playing a lot of, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, not too, it's, holy shit guys, if you have not tried this game, definitely take the two minutes, go spend the 70 or 80 dollars, whatever the hell it costs where you live, and buy this game if you have a PS4. You definitely have to try this game out. It's definitely worth the investment. It's honestly, uh, at first I, I played Resident Evil, I, I know you guys saw that, and I, I played a lot of it in the last month or so, and Resident Evil was fantastic, and I have to say, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is definitely my top game to beat right now. There's a lot of new, a lot of other games coming out really soon, like, uh, one of the best one I'm waiting for is Res, uh, not Resident Evil, I've already played that game, John. Uh, <laughs> is uh, Red Dead Red uh, Redemption Two? I think yeah, they were calling that one. So Rockstar usually doesn't doesn't um, fail to show good stuff to us usually, and uh, yeah. So that's honestly Horizon is the only game I'm playing right now. That's why I recorded the podcast right now because I really don't know what else to play. There's other games like I have to finish Watch Dogs Two. I have to finish uh, what game? Let, let me look at my uh, my pile here. I got so many other ones anyway. I didn't I didn't know what to do. Oh, I have uh, also the division that I want to get through eventually at some point in time. So, that's pretty much the only thing I'm playing. I know that was a short segment of what the hell I'm playing. Uh before I get any further, I'm going to do the quick uh, uh the quick house cleaning of where so I uh, I'll save the time at the end. If you guys want to follow me, of course, follow me everywhere me time gamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram and Everywhere, uh, me time gamer, uh, of course on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash me time gamer. That's where I post a video every day of the week, Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and yeah, I'll keep the rest for, um, for at the end of the podcast once, uh, most of you have trailed off and not listening anymore anyway. But I hope you guys stay till the end. So the next, and then the next segment we're going to talk, Jesus Christ, it's, uh, it's apparent that I'm doing this more off the cuff and I'm not just, I'm just shooting the shit more than anything else. I wanted to be more natural this time around just instead of writing everything down and just scripting everything. It got kind of long and boring when I was doing that. So in the next segment, segment, Jesus Christ, two times in a row. Okay, good job, Joe. So the next segment we're going to go with is the new releases for uh, this week. So this week has a short week for releases. So what I could see uh, so far, I was able to find from the good folks at GameSpot was uh, we have four uh, four releases this week. So we have for PS4 and PC, we had the Loot Rascals. Uh, for PS4, we have Near Automata, which I have played a demo. Definitely go check out the demo. It's a two-part demo. Uh, I think the demo is still available if you guys want to try it on the PS4, but don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. And then also on the PC, uh, also releasing on March 7th, is One Sole Purpose. I have no clue what this game... Let, let's see what this game is about. Let's see. Let's quickly click on it. Uh, I might put a little, little, uh, small little link on that. Uh, there's nothing. GameSpot has nothing on that. Uh, 
Let's uh let's take let's take the second and a half here. Let's go give me a second here. Google, Google. One sole purpose. Soul with a with an O at the end. No, at the beginning. No, never mind. Never mind. That was a joke that I was trying to do, but it was not working. Okay, just give me a second. One soul purpose uh, game. Okay, it's on Steam. So yeah, it did say it was releasing on PC. It's already out by the time I'm recording this, so uh, it's built so far. It's a sci-fi horror game built in or an uh, Unreal Engine four. Uh, let's not let's not do that. Okay, so it's a first-person hor- sci-fi horror game. So I, I'm guessing like um, Mass Effect or uh, uh, that type of game. There, it's very, it looks very eerie. The graphics look nice in the picture. And yeah, that's it for one sole purpose. Didn't want to go too long in that game. I didn't even know what the hell that game was. So the next game on the list, oh, sorry, fuck, I closed that list. Anyway, the last game on the list was, uh, Tom Class, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildland, which is a game I've been waiting for. Unfortunately, I won't be, I won't, I won't buy because I don't have the budget to buy it right now, but it's definitely coming out today. It's already out by this time. But, um, yeah, definitely should check that out. If you guys, I played the, de- the beta, so of course I made two videos for that. You can definitely go check that out on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for the, that's it for the new releases this weekend. There isn't any more unless, unless I'm missing a list somewhere I didn't see. It doesn't really matter. So we will move into the news right now. All right, so the biggest news I saw this week was, uh, what was it? What was it? Well, let's start with last week's news, uh, for the, uh, the release of the Switch. The Switch was released Friday with uh, about a hundred different games there, most of them indie games. But uh, uh, of course, all you know, the biggest uh, the biggest release that comes with it. A lot of people are saying it's one of the only games coming out with it. But hey, can you agree with it or not? I I, I find that actually it is one of the only game that would have gave me a reason to buy the Switch. And believe me, I've I th- that's the weird part is I used to be a big Nintendo fan, and I'm I'm very much in the opinion that Nintendo should just stop making consoles, and just put their game on every every other console. But to make they they would make plenty more money than they would just releasing a single console. Because right now, uh, one of their big game, of course, is Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is definitely a game I would want to play, and it's on Metacritic. It has a, ne- a score of ninety eight, so that. That's pretty fucking good. It's, uh, I think a lot of critics were saying it's like unanimously one of the best games so far. Well, not for so far for the Switch because it's the only freaking game out for the console. <laughs> well, not literally, but uh, some are, some of the other games are more like little small games, party games, and stuff like that. And yeah, apparently the Switch is selling good. It's getting a lot of good reviews. The console, a lot, a lot of people are complaining about the, uh, the left Joy-Con control, uh, the left Joy-Con, I won't say controller, cause Con is controller shortened. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're saying it desyncs, the Bluetooth desyncs in it, which is pretty weird. Uh, I don't know too much about that, but I did, um, I may, I did a little bit of snooping when I went to buy Horizon Zero Dawn the other day, and, uh, I was talking to the manager, manager there at, uh, EB Games, the, the one I go to. Uh, EB Games, of course, I'm in Canada, so that's why it's called EB Game and not GameStop, but most people already know that. And yeah, he was telling me that, um, but how the, how the hell did he, uh, how the hell did he, uh, uh, put that together? He was telling me he received an email from Nintendo or the GameSpot himself, uh, referring an, a Nintendo email that they were going to receive extra controllers, uh, uh, Joy-Con, uh, Joy-Cons, because they were saying that if ever somebody comes in with a new controller, uh, just to exchange it right away and like the other one just send it back to the company they would get reimbursed or something like that which is pretty weird to say like usually you bring your controller to try to fix it uh, and also the uh, the manager also stated to me that he would he they were gonna send him send uh, the stores extra controllers because they i think they the way the way he was implying is that they they knew a bit about the problem already that the control some of the controllers were going to have difficulties which is kind of weird but take that with a grain of salt this is just a word uh, mouth mouth uh, whatever the the expression is in english i don't remember uh yeah so that's pretty much it for the switch release it's going good a lot of people are happy um i already saw some stupid article like uh, i'm playing like i said i'm playing a horizon and some people are like oh horizon is way selling way more than uh, Zelda is like, uh, well, of course, you idiot. It's selling <laughs> better. You have a 50 million 
uh, user base playing fucking Horizon and you have a console that just released one day, not even a million probably console sold on the first day and you're assuming it's going to sell more than fucking Horizon. Horizon probably already sell fucking, uh, I would, I would be, I would, I would be willing to say like between two and three million copies in the first week. So you're assuming, uh, less than one million play, player base on the Switch is already going to surpass 50 million user base console. It's a bit, it was a bit ridiculous when they were talking about that. I was reading the articles like, yeah, this person just looking for something to argue about and make the fucking internet go crazy again for no reason, which seems to be, which seems to be the favorite pastime of most media outlet with their clickbait titles and stuff like that. Uh, and talking about, uh, the media, well, I don't really consider him media, but Jim Sterling's in the news again. Well, not in the news. He, he posted a video, another, he just, if you, if you've been following, if you don't follow Jim Sterling, Jim fucking Sterling, definitely go follow him on YouTube. Uh, Jim Sterling, I think it's, uh, if I remember his YouTube channel, I follow him, so I don't remember exactly, uh, what the exact name is, but that doesn't matter. So if you remember, a week ago, he finally finished, he was, uh, battling a court case against a company, uh, Digital Homicide, if I remember. Doesn't matter, they don't make any fucking good games anyway. Uh, uh the, he, he got dragged into court because he, he basically t- said, that, uh, gave a critique on their game and said their game pretty much fucking sucked. And uh, which, it would, if you look at their trailers for all that, for their videos, it actually does look pretty sucky. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty weird that they brought him to court and it cost him a lot of money. And after a year's worth of fucking court, they finally settled out, uh, they finally settled out of court and, uh, he put that behind him. And apparently the new, co- there's another company now, uh, because he, he, uh, did, uh, his impression on, uh, I think it's airport master, whatever the name of the game. He put his, he gave out his impression cause that's what Jim does. He does like, uh, first impression, early impressions, uh, early access impressions, stuff like that. And, uh, the company didn't like him cr- badly critiquing the, their game. Cause uh, when you look at the game, it, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> it's a fucking, uh, it's a pretty bad game. It's one of, it's one of those simulators where, uh, you put, you punch in a couple numbers and it fucking generates a, a field and whatever. It's, you know how those fucking simulation works. The, you have to simulate real, real, real life working and stuff like that. It was, was pretty weird. Anyway, this company wasn't too happy about Jim uh, talking about their games in the poor light, which it awfully deserved, and uh, uh, they 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 were trying to strike him down for a a trademark strike, which usually is kind of weird for YouTube because usually it's more of a copyright strike because you're using material without the consent of uh, the um, the 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 maker's uh, consent or stuff like that. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's a trademark. They said that he's Usually when you're, when you're, uh, striking somebody on trademark is because you're using their brand and using it to d- mislead, mislead people into thinking that that's the actual product and not the real product, which is clearly not what Jim does. Jim reviews and assess and critiques a game and under fair use, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to take material, put it on a video and critique it. And as long as you're critiquing it, you're not, you're not infringing copyright. You're not infringing trademarks or anything like that. If you read just a bit about it, because it'll be, it it's odd to say, but I only have a I only have 160 subscribers, and I get about maybe 60 views a video a day, maybe, and I still get I still get fucking copyright notices, and I still have to battle them. And the first thing I do is I go to U.S. copyright laws, and then Canadian copyright laws, and then I just copy paste that section where it says uh, under fair use, I'm allowed to use this, I'm allowed to do this, I'm allowed to critique, uh, whatever. And usually after a month, they just fucking don't, e- they don't even, they don't even, uh, 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 deny, deny the claim. They just fucking let it go through and say, oh yeah, you were right. And under fair use, they, they they have to, but it's not the case most of the time. In this case, the company, uh, the way the company did that, uh, hopefully if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm, I'm showing you the, uh, the, 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 the paper of this. But anyway, what the company did in short is in, in their Steam, uh, terms of services or whatever, which surpass, which they try to curse, circumvent the Steam ones. Sorry, I had the verb there. Uh, they had to, um, uh, they, you have to get permission to use, uh, their company's material and video, which is kind of weird because no, you don't. If you're doing critique, you don't. And, uh, they try to claim that if he doesn't take the video down or, and he, basically the way he, he phrased it is like, he would have to take the video down, ask for permission, which you know, as 
as fucking bright as day that they won't after <laughs> they already know what kind of video they're he's already making on them then if they would approve that then he would put the video back up which is fucking asinine and uh yeah then jim knowing jim if you guys follow him you already know it's like uh fuck no the video staying right where it is and do whatever the fuck you want and <laughs> you'll I'll, i'll i'll see you later on this um Apparently, apparently they're not big on uh, watching news and following uh, who this guy is actually is, because I already saw. I was reading the article of the. Uh, I went on on, his, on Jim Sterling uh, Jimquisition dot com, which is his website, and uh, he, he the video he put up about this explaining the situation. If you uh, if you read the comments there, and I I went to check real quick. Uh, apparently, the game was seen uh, had a. Uh, a middle score sort of sort of not positive but not negative and it had some positive reviews on it and uh, apparently as soon as the gym made that video that fucking game just tanked and went to fucking negative reviews and stuff like that which is that that's the power of who jim is if you if you make a stupid game and then you try to go against him your game's gonna fucking tank even lower than you you want it to go which is unfortunate for the company but hey if you don't if you don't do your your homework before you try to attack somebody You get you play with the fire, you get burned, right? And so I don't know if that's how the expression goes. Anyway, we'll uh, keep going. So I talked about that. I talked about oh yes. Now the last big piece of news I wanted to talk about is uh, if you guys remember, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are big fans of horror games. And of course, if you guys remember, we had Outlast a couple uh, the, uh, sort of almost at uh, the release of uh, the PlayStation 4. Uh, but now, of course, uh, Outlast 2, did I say Outlast? Sorry, I meant Outlast was almost released at the, uh, at the beginning of the PS4 era. And of course, now they're coming out with Outlast 2 and it finally has a release date. If you remember last year, it got pushed back because, um, for some reason, the, I guess they needed more development, but the game is finally announced for release on PC, PS4, and Xbox One for April 25th, 2017, which is awesome. Uh, rated M, uh, survival horror, you guys know all that. You know, if you know Outlast, Of course, if you don't know what Outlast is, uh, Outlast 2, I'll put a, uh, I'll put, uh, either in the description or whatever. I'll, you can go, I have an Outlast, um, demo, uh, Outlast demo video you guys can go check out. I think it's the only, one of the only videos that you're gonna see me actually fucking jump like a madman because I actually got scared by something real bad in the middle of the video. So definitely go check that out. It's definitely a video to go check. And, um, This, this is a game, like, I really fell in love with it when it, uh, like, the first game when it came out, I really fell in love with it, because it was so amazing, like, for an indie, uh, for an indie creator to create such an amazing game. The first game, I have to say, like, that year won a lot of awards for being one of the best horror, survive, horror games, uh, coming out that year, and it definitely deserves every single award it gets. Even I'm thinking about playing, uh, myself playing, uh, uh outlast one again like with the dlc and all that because i haven't finished the dlc which is something i really regret like a lot of other games i'm playing right now that i really wished i finished and that's, i finished the main story so i understand what the main story is it's just i haven't finished the dlc i got stuck at one point it's like ah oh, fuck it i'm done let's move on to something else and uh yeah so outlast definitely i think they're coming out also once uh once the second game's coming out uh they are releasing a um they are releasing Uh, they are releasing a, a Trinity, uh, box with, uh, the first, first game, the expansion and Outlast 2. So you guys can do the, 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 the hard copy of that at your local, whatever mom and grop shop, you, whatever you want to go get it at. And I think that's pretty much it for the news. There's not a lot of news, uh, to talk about right now. Uh, talk about Zelda getting a 98 on Metacritics. Yeah, that was done. Uh, Outlast, that was done too. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. So the next segment, uh, I think this is, a, this is the second. Okay. Let me, let me start over here <laughs> for some reason. Uh, I'm a bit cold right now. So I sort of, uh, I'm not, I'm not nervous or anything. I'm, that, I'm just talking to you guys. So the next thing what I'm going to do is, uh, it's a thing I used to do in the old podcast two years ago. And, uh, I'm going to bring it back. Uh, maybe not all the time. It's just once in a while. So it's going to be kickstarting it. I'm So you guys, if you don't remember what kickstarting is, if the first time listening to podcasts, hey, welcome. Uh, I definitely don't recommend going to see the other podcast because it, it was very scripted and very uh, not me what I am right now. So definitely uh, I'll explain it to you real quick. Basically, kickstarting it is basically what I try to do is I go on Kickstarter, I rummage around the you know, Kickstarter games. There's something that has a 
decent chance of fucking making it. And um, I've tried to find an interesting game and, and talk about it to you guys because I just find a way. I like I like showing you guys the small little games that are awesome to look at and to talk about and to play. Uh, which uh, this game I haven't actually played, but it looks pretty fucking cool. So the first the game for the the podcast uh, this time around is called Legion 1917: Rise of the Bolsheviks. So of course, just by the title, you should you should understand if you know a bit about history. This is a story driven. Well, the title, the undertitle uh, the, of the game is story driven tactical strategy set during Re- Russian Civil War. So basically, they're during the revolution Re- revolutionary war of Russia. Uh, which is always for me, for me, Russia during, uh, during the communist era. Well, not all of it, but from like 1917, where, where the, the civil war started until the 1970s, where, where it started sort of peter out. It's really something that fascinates me, like just how, 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 uh, society can just turn around, uh, from being, uh, I think, uh, well, from a, a tsar and then going from a, uh, communists, which didn't work, and <laughs> and just just the, the the sheer history of it was pretty amazing. Anyway, the game basically is a turn-based strategy game. Uh, I think that's uh, what they explained it. Basically, the graphic style I'll sh- I'll show it on the screen here. But for you guys that are listening to the podcast, it's a, a turn-based action game, uh, strategy game. It has it sort of has the aesthetic of Tintin. If you guys remember Tintin, if you're too young. Well, shit, I don't know what to explain. It looks like Tintin. Look up Tintin, or even better, look up this game. <laughs> Legion 1917. Uh, looks pretty, like I said, it's turn-based. Uh, it's, well, what, how, how to explain it the best. So, let's see, let's see the way they, dis- they, they, they describe it here. An isometric story-driven turn-based strategy that takes place into the heart of 1917 Russia, when once a mighty empire is crumbling. Fate strikes a terrible blow to one family when a new power is born, forcing them to flee St. Petersburg to save their lives. The new power is the harsh and dangerous Bolshevik state, a state that seems destined to wage permanent civil war against its own citizens in order to create a new type of society. Players will witness radical changes in society as they depart on a journey through the largest country on earth. Uh, You will dive deep into tactical combat with various characters using cover melee combat, or deadly grenades and machine guns. With enough skills, you might even be able to get on a on a train and make it back home. All of, what's the last sentence here? All of that in our unique hand drawn graphic with old school animation and instinctive environment powered by Unreal Engine 4. So so far, this game is announced for PC, uh, PC. So basically, Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's not coming to console, and it's uh, announced to be releasing uh, late 2017. Which has and also has about a seven to ten hour of gameplay, so I'll leave a link in the uh, description of the video if you're watching, uh, if you're uh, or if go to uh, metimegamer.com, go to the uh, podcast uh, posts and you'll see the link at the bottom there. I'll show you. I'll get a link for you guys so you guys can check that out. Uh, so far, uh, they're asking for sixty five euros, sixty five thousand euros, and they presently have. Uh, uh, 8,600 euros, and there's still 21 days left from the recording of this podcast. So the 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 the, the re- <clears throat> let me start back over here. So basically, the funding ends on March 29th, 2017. So definitely go check that out. I will put, like I said, I'll put the link in the description below. And that's going to be it for the podcast, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the first episode. The first episode. I don't know why. I see, it seemed like at the end there, I was starting to missing out of gas. That's why I try to keep it to small, like close to thirty minute podcasts, and a little bit more natural, a bit more uh, just free balling here for you guys would talk. Of course, if you guys want to reach me, you can definitely do so for the podcast. You can write to me at podcast podcast at metimegamer.com, where you can send your question uh, and and inquir- inquiries critiques anything like that anything you want to ask a question for the podcast that i'll answer on the podcast for you guys i definitely would do that uh it will be fine of course like i said at the beginning follow me everywhere me time gamer and uh, what else is there something else i want to leave with you guys oh of course uh if you want to subscribe to if you want to subscribe and rate the podcast definitely go do that best way to do it is do it on itunes uh you can also do it on stitcher and where usually like where i where i listen to my podcast is on 
uh, Google Play, uh, Google Play or Google, um, what the fuck, let me, well, give me a second, I'll check on my phone here, give me a second, we're coming back, da -da -do 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 -do. oh, and I saw a Facebook, there's a cool new game coming, I know this is pretty dumb, I'm just putting this out of order there, I just, I saw on Facebook a game called Remothered, it's a, a horror game, definitely go check that out, I, I'm, I won't take the time to explain it to you guys, because it's a bit long there, but it's like, it's a horror game, it's a, uh, the main formula of Remothered Tormented Fodders is based on run and hide combo, stealth exploration, enigma, and interactive cutscenes. Lo no loading time, no guns or powerful weapon, interactive soundtrack and audio effect. That's pretty cool. So yeah, I, I, you can go to their website and you, uh, you actually, they, if you go down their website and go way down the bottom, you can, uh, you can subscribe or whatever to their mailing list and you, you'll get uh, beta access for their game, which is pretty cool. And, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to check, uh, what was it, what's it called? Play music. Play mu music on, uh, usually on all Android, that's what I use. And, uh, yeah, so iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn also, Tune I know TuneIn's not as big as it used to, but it still fucking works. And you guys can definitely get, go check that out. Uh, was there anything else I needed to say at the end of the podcast? I really don't remember. Oh yeah, and if you guys want to support, I know I don't usually like doing this, but usually before I had affiliates, which I still have, but I don't like using that anymore, but I just started recently a Patreon, so if you guys want to go, go to patreon.com slash gamer and go, if you want to become a patron there, definitely go do that, support the podcast and my channel and all all the things I do, would really appreciate that, the more you, the more you, the more you support, the more I can do, uh, at some point, it would be fun to do this as a full-time job to give you guys the maximum content I can produce every day uh, at the best quality. Because I, I do, I do, I do know that sometimes my videos are not always like maximum quality because I do have run short on time. But I do want to at least you guys get a new video every day of the week, uh, Monday to Friday. And uh, yeah, so I think I'm gonna leave it there, guys. There's not much else I can tell you without um, boring you to death. So I will thank you, and of course, follow me everywhere. I already said that a million times. I don't know why I keep repeating that. Fucking, I'm so used to doing it at the end. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, for watching and listening, of course. And I will see you in the next video or podcast. Keep on keeping on.